this video is about oil pressure on the T140 uh, motorcycles. Um, the oil pressure on these book spec is maximum 65 to 80 psi and the minimum is 20 to 25 psi. The minimum is a little bit open uh, to question in that the oil pressure gauge, oil pressure light, sorry, which normally um, runs off a little pressure switch down at the front of the bike, operates at 3.5 psi. Um, if your oil pressure light comes on at 3.5 psi, it's not really doing much, is it? Now I would say it's pretty terminal for your bike, especially if you ride along on a motorway and you suddenly find you've got 3.5 psi. Don't use them things, they're awful. Um, they're very unreliable. Uh, some of them don't even operate at 3.5, like a 1, if that. I've seen them. They're all over the shop anyway. Aftermarket ones are rubbish. Uh, take the thing off, is that what my recommendation is, and fit an oil pressure gauge, uh, an oil filled pressure gauge, uh, one that's up to job. Don't use an air filled pressure gauge or an, oil, an air one. Um, they will break very quickly. They're, they're not made for hydraulics and you need a hydraulic one which is oil filled with a damper in it because uh, the fluctuations in oil pressure will just destroy uh, a cheap oil one uh, that has no oil in it. So. Uh, my oil pressure gauge I fitted here I because it's easier to see and uh, as I'm a Yorkshireman, I don't like to spend heaps of money on things, so I made a uh, an aluminium um, bracket to fit it, and it's fastened to the top fork you know, under the nut, and it works quite well. Um, this oil pressure gauge cost me about 110 New Zealand dollars, 120, I think it was 110, 120, which is about 50, 60 quid in English money um, and I just made a backing for it so it fits under there and it's all connected up as it is shown. The oil um, pressure gauge is fed from here which is where the um, oil pressure switch fits. You simply remove that and fit your oil pressure gauge uh, fitting. It's straight onto that uh, make sure you use a parallel bolt uh, adapter and don't use a tape one because it will split the case if you use a, uh, a tape one. Um, you can get a T-piece that will fit in there so you can use your oil pressure switch as well. But I wouldn't bother just chucking it bin and things. Next is your oil pressure control valve which is here at the back. This controls your oil pressure and it prevents it from exceeding 80 psi, or oh, that's the uh, purpose of it. And what that does, what your oil pressure control valve does, is it prevents excessive oil pressure. It doesn't do anything for the low pressure side at all, it only con controls the uh, upper side, which is the uh, 65 to 80 psi part. And it's basically a piston, uh, which I will show you now. Now using a 15 16 socket, you just remove the end cap off the control valve to get at the controls, uh, the, the springs inside. Right, this is your uh, oil control valve, oil pressure control valve. Taken apart, obviously. Now the piston here fits inside the cylinder here. In the side of the cylinder, there is a groove, as you can see. And at the bottom of there, you can see a hole. Now what happens is, is that when you start your bike up, oil gets pushed in through here from your pump pressure builds up forcing this piston against this spring that way that lifts off its seat to give you 
oil pressure, which is fighting against that spring. And it lifts until it hits, or the bottom of the piston gets opposite to that hole. When it gets opposite that hole, oil starts to flow back to tank or back to the, into the crankcase. And the higher the pressure, the more that spring compresses. I found a picture of the oil circuit which I've put on this video uh, so you can follow the oil circuit through yourself which may help uh, explain it better than how I can uh, explain it to you on here. <laughs> Now the purpose of the oil pressure control valve is to, or one of the functions is to protect the um, oil seals in your crankshaft. These crank, these oil seals fit onto the end of your crankshaft in the timing chest. There's one that goes onto the um, crankshaft and the other one goes onto the uh, oil seal on the exhaust cam. They're both the same size. If your oil pressure is too high, what will happen is it will blow these seals. So if you go 80 plus 90 PSI, what these will do is invert and they will split uh, like this one has. And when it does that, they will just leak oil and they spew oil into your timing chest instead of pumping it into your crankshaft. And that's all because the oil pressure control valve isn't operating correctly. Personally, I believe that keeping your oil pressure down to about 60, 60 PSI maximum is perfect. And that's how I have all my bikes. Now that O-ring, which I mentioned earlier, which is in here, um, is the central distribution point if you like for your oil one port goes to your uh, oil pressure control valve one port goes to your crank shaft and another one goes to your tappet blocks if that oil seal fails obviously you're not going to get much oil going to your engine and your tappet blocks and then most of it will probably just drain to tank it's very important that that oil seal is in good condition. Your oil will drill, drain to tank from here because it's literally squirting around the end of the uh, crankshaft straight into your timing chest and from your timing chest there is a, uh, lots of vents that allow it to get back into your crankcase. So all that's happening is that your pump's pumping oil it's coming up here to your um, oil seal, it's leaking past your oil seal and going back into the crankcase. I can't get over how important that oil seal is. 90% of oil, low oil pressure problems are because of that oil seal. Simply changing that oil seal will solve your problems. Also, if your oil is worn and it's like you've just done I don't know, 1500 miles plus it gets thin so when it gets thin obviously it squirts past that seal easier so your oil pressure gets even lower so keeping your oil in spec which is changing your oil every 1500 miles and keeping that oil seal in good condition that'll keep your oil pressure up there's so many times people have come to see me and said oh my oil pressure is no good my engine needs a rebuild and all it is is that seal <laughs> it's easy it's like take your timing chest off I know I've got an electric start on here, but your normal timing chest is just the same, basically, behind here. Change that oil seal. It's, it's like, there are about three books. So let's cover the oil circuits. <clears throat> you have two, basically, oil, two basic oil circuits. You've got the return line, and you've got the pressure line. <clears throat> the return line comes out through here, as you all know. And it's fed from a line here, and it comes off the pump. Now that pump picks up oil from your crankcase and it blows the oil 
back into your tank. That's the only thing that that does. At the top of here, there is a feed line that feeds your rockers. So your rockers are fed from your return line. Hope that's clear. Now the engine is uh, fed from your pump to the gallery in here where it's distributed to your uh, crankshaft and your tappet blocks and also there's a line that feeds to your oil control valve. That oil supply is protected by the oil seal on the end of your crankshaft. So if there's a problem with that, everything else in your engine is affected from it. Hope that's clear. What I've seen so many people do, <coughs> um, because that oil seal's leaking, they put a bigger pump on, which pumps more and more oil, um, you, rather than sealing it. Pumping more oil is not going to solve the problem. It, well, it will overcome it a bit, because you're shoving more past that sail, so a bit more is going to get to your engine, admittedly. You don't need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on bigger and bigger pumps. Just change that oil sail. It's three dollars. <laughs> it's madness to put a bigger pump on. The pump that's on it is fine. So I'll just start her up. Uh, obviously one more thing is this bike's been stood for nearly a week in my garage and as you can see there is no oil on the floor <coughs> a correctly maintained Bonneville does not leak oil it's a complete myth driven by the Japanese I think and from people that don't know what they're doing if your bike's leaking oil, fix it. Hope you found this informative, guys and girls. Uh, ride safe.